Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're going to be talking about 29ers. So just so you know, this is going to be a pretty long video. Uh, I am going to put a table of contents down in the description. So if you want to fast forward to any section, you can do that. So today's video, I'm going to compare some of the 29ers I've ridden over the past year. Um, I've ridden a bunch. Some of them we're going to talk about. Some of them I put a post out a couple days ago as to which would be your favorite. So I rode the Giant Pro 29er. I've ridden the Yeti SB150. I rode the Ibis Ritmo V2. And I also rode the Canyon, uh, what is it, the Canyon Strive out in Sedona. One other thing I want to say is this is just my opinion. Opinions are like, enter clip. Well, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Everybody has, you know, brands that they're loyal to. Um, I'm not really particular brand loyal. I just want the, just pretty much like what everybody else wants is I want the best bang for my buck. And if that's a Giant, if that's a Getty, if that's Ibis, as long as they have a good track record and good warranty, I'm going to go with that bike. So 29er suspension and geometry has really progressed a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, a couple of years ago, 29ers were not my favorite uh, for many reasons. But namely that for me, the older 29ers, just the turning characteristics weren't there. They weren't as quick and nimble as 27.5s. So that had to do a lot with how high the rake was on a lot of the bikes and also the, the front fork offset. The fork offset has been getting shorter and shorter over the years and now they've kind of, a lot of the companies have kind of found a really good middle ground as to, you know, the rake of the bike and also that fork offset so that the new 29ers and the ones we're going to be talking about today are just as quick, just as nimble, feel just as, you know, awesome going down the trail, especially through the switchbacks as any 27.5 that I've ridden. Just for a frame of reference, I am six foot two, about 240 pounds. Uh, I've been riding mountain bikes for about three years. Uh, I currently have a 2018 Giant Rain that I ride all over the place on top of all the demos and videos that I've done in the past. If you wanna see any of the full videos I've done on the four bikes today, you can click on that link right there. So I have also ridden the 2020 Mega Tower and High Tower, and the reason why they're not in this video is because those aren't my favorite bikes. I, I just don't like the way they turn and you know so on and so forth. Plenty of people have them. I mean, Santa Cruz is a great company. It's nothing against Santa Cruz. I just don't like those particular two models. The way we're gonna rank these bikes is in four different categories. The first category is gonna be price. The other three categories are gonna be best bike, I think, pedaling uphill, best bike, I think, going downhill, and then my overall best pick out of these four. Each bike will be rated one through four, one being the highest or my first choice, and four being the lowest which in some of the categories is really <laughs> just pretty close to number one anyways. So the reason why I'm doing price first is because I think price is kind of like the biggest factor in anybody's decision to buy a mountain bike. If it doesn't matter how great I think a Yeti is or a, a Ritmo Ibis is, if you can't afford it. What's a ZJ? <laughs> if you have to ask big man, you can't afford it. I got four dollars it's really not going to be something that you're going to be looking at. So price is definitely, I think, the largest contributing factor in what type of mountain bike or the mountain bike that you choose. Another thing that you need to be aware of is what components are coming on the bike. If you like Shimano stuff and the bike you're looking at comes in all SRAM parts, you know, the drivetrain and the brakes and so forth, that could also be an additional cost. Um, maybe the particular bike shop that you're purchasing the bike from can switch out some of those parts and give you credit, you know, for the SRAM stuff they're taking off or vice versa. The prices that we're going to be talking about today are the direct MSRP prices off of, you know, each one of these companies' websites. There are always sales going on. You know, Yeti has a lot of sales. Uh, Canyon also has kind of like a clearance, uh, a clearance section for their bikes on their website as well. So. These are just straight off MSRP prices and we're gonna go from there. So the winner in this first category is the Giant Rain. 
it does have a an aluminum framed uh, option it's the giant rain 29er model 2 that model starts at three thousand dollars bike review i rode a carbon bike but the aluminum model you know it's going to be maybe a little bit heavier some of the components aren't going to be quite as good as some of the carbon you know carbon versions but this is the winner at starting off at three thousand dollars in a very close second place is the ibis ritmo but this is the af version of the bike this is the aluminum framed version it's basically the same geometry as the ritmo v2 just an aluminum frame it does obviously have different components as well so if you want to save a lot of money and get a bike that's very similar to the ritmo v2 the carbon version you can get the af and the af starts at 3200 dollars okay so coming in third place is the canyon strive um, that bike does not come in an aluminum version but the entry carbon version of that bike is 3700 dollars which is a really great starting price for a carbon bike Plus, uh, the components are pretty decent on it, and yeah, third place. So it only leaves one bike left. That would be the Yeti SB150. This bike also does not have any type of aluminum counterpart. The entry price for, a, for an SB150 is $5,700. Now, you are getting a really great carbon-framed bike, and you're also getting some really good components on that, but $5,700 for a starting price is pretty high. So with modern geometry and just, you know, fork suspension getting so much better than it was just even a couple of years ago, a lot of now enduro type downhill bikes are actually doing really good climbing up hills. So the winner of this category, the best uphill climber, in my opinion, is the Ibis Ritmo V2. The head tube angle is fairly steep for what I would call an enduro bike at 64.9 degrees. It also has a little bit less overall travel than the bike that came in second place but this bike is just amazing uphill you know you don't even really if you have the v2 model and you have either a dpx2 or the x2 shock in the rear you don't even have to lock it out you can just climb hills leave your suspension fully open all day long and and this thing will get up hills like a mountain goat the bike that comes in second place is the yeti sb150 this bike has 170 millimeter fork in the front, 150 millimeters of travel in the rear. It's longer, it's slacker than the Ritmo V2. So with all of that extra travel and suspension and longer wheelbase, this bike is very close. It's a very close second place to that Ibis Ritmo. The Yeti SB150 is just amazing. The Switch Infinity system, I mean, there's you can leave your shocks open just like the Ibis. You can leave your shocks fully open climbing up you're not going to feel any travel you know you're not going to feel any bob in the rear end at all and it's just an amazing bike it's a very close second place to the ibis so in third place would be the canyon strive with the canyon strive you have the shapeshifter system and by pushing one of the levers on the handlebars it's supposed to change it to a downhill enduro bike to something that's going to climb uphill a little bit better and then last but not least in fourth place as far as climbing goes would be the giant rain um, I've never, you know, my 2018 Giant Rain, I've already said, is not a great climber, and this bike is not much better. It did have a better rear shock on the demo bike than my bike currently, but even still, there's something with the, there's something about the Maestro suspension that there tends to be a lot of pedal bob, at least for me, I'm a bigger guy. Um, you know, if you're a buck 50, you're probably not something to worry about. But for me, there's always been a lot of pedal bob, and the Giant Rain, the 29er, it did climb a little bit better than my current bike, but not by much. So our next category is going to be downhill. Which bike did I like the best? And this is going to be probably the most difficult category for me to categorize. Uh, just because all four of these bikes are a lot of fun, did really great going downhill. I'd have to say that the bike that I probably had the most fun on was the Giant Rain 29er. I didn't expect it. You know, I went in expecting it to be just an incremental difference between my bike and that um, I took it out to the luge and I rode it a couple other places as well and I had so much fun if, and it did really well I also had a really good time riding the Canyon Strive um, I was able to ride that bike out in Sedona I you know I did the demo out there I rode it down Grand Central did it did Grand Central at least a couple times on that bike and I had a really fun time with it that was actually the fastest bike uh, I had the fastest times on Grand Central on that bike and it did really well. The only gripe that I have about the Canyon Strive is that the head tube angle 
is pretty steep and I'll put right here, that would be my only complaint about the Canyons Drive. Another bike I rode out in Sedona was the Ibis Ritmo V2. And I mean, that bike is, is so amazing. I really love that bike. And it was literally brand new, like the brakes hadn't even been bed in yet. So I had to bed the brakes in on my way out to Grand Central and it was just the climb, it did great on the climb, it did great on the downhill, it was super nimble, you know, switchbacks, rock garden sections, everything. That bike did an amazing job out there. So when I did the Yeti SB150 uh, demo review and ride, I was able to ride it here on my local trails in uh, Aliso Viejo. I rode it down Lynx, Rocket, and I took it down Five Oaks as well. And it just blew me away about on just how good this bike was i mean it i was i was flying down the trail and and you know you were you feel it obviously you feel it but with that 170 mil fork up front and the switch infinity system it just feels that that bike is just bottomless when you're when you're hitting the rock gardens when you're going off of little sands and stuff like that it was really great it even saved me a couple of times on some bad line choices going down five oaks uh, probably if I'd have been on my bike, I would have dove the front fork and, and gone over the bars. But with that little extra amount of travel and just the way the bike is set up, it saved me on, on one of the real chunky parts. And uh, yeah, it got me down the hill in one piece. So if I had to rank all four bikes in the downhill category, number one and number two are very, very close. But number one, I would give to the Yeti SB150. Um, just with that little more, you know, that little bit more of travel on the front fork, it also being a little bit longer and a little bit slacker than the Ritmo V2, I would definitely have to put that as my number one downhill bike. Number two would be the Ritmo V2. Um, that bike is just, it just, it just feels great. And it just, it just floats over everything in it. And it's a really great bike for downhill as well. The Giant Rain 29er would probably come in third. Um, that bike is so much fun going downhill. It's just, everything about it was great and, and I had a really good time on it. And that leaves the Canyon Strive in fourth place. And I mean, all three, all four of these bikes are very close when it comes to downhill. But the Strive would probably be fourth just because of that steeper uh, head tube angle. It just, you know, it pulls you a little bit farther forward, whereas I want to be a little bit farther back on some of the steeper stuff. After all that, off the, after the price, the downhill, the uphill, overall, which is my favorite bike of the four? I've always been a believer of more is better, and especially when it comes to suspension. I'm a bigger guy. Uh, I do like riding chunkier trails. I don't do a whole lot of cross-country stuff. You know, I barely ever ride, you know, cross-country bikes or the mid-range kind of stuff. Most of the bikes that I ride are anywhere from 150 to 170, almost 185 millimeter, uh, millimeters of travel. So if you can have all of that suspension and still climb well, uh, that's the bike I'm gonna choose. And my number one overall pick would be the Yeti SB150. Just because it has that extra little bit of travel on the front fork and the Switch Infinity system, that is my favorite bike. It climbs great, it goes downhill great. The only problem is the price. The number two bike would be the Ibis Ritmo V2. That bike is very close in suspension and geometry to the Yeti SB150. It has, I mean, it's just an amazing bike. And if I was going to purchase a bike tomorrow, I would probably purchase the Ibis Ritmo V2. You know, component wise, comparing it to the T1 of the SB150, it's very close if you get the XT model of the V2 and it's almost $2,000 cheaper. Third and fourth place goes, uh, pretty much for me, the Canyon Strive and the Giant 29er are pretty much tied for third place. You know, the, the Canyon Strive is gonna be a little bit better climbing and uh, not as good downhill compared to the, the Giant 29er. The 29er, say, is not as good uphill, but is so much more fun going downhill. So it's kind of a toss up between those two for, you know, third and fourth place. So yeah, hopefully you found this video interesting. Hopefully I can, you know, help you make a decision. I know sometimes you just want to hear someone else tell you that the bike that you're choosing is the one that's going to work out best for you. I always say that if you have the chance, demo a bike before you purchase it. I know it's difficult right now because of COVID. All of the demo fleets are pretty much shut down. There are possibly some, you know, bike expos coming up in like September, late October that hopefully that they're going to have demo bikes at and I'm going to try and go and get on some of those newer bikes. But 
always, if you can, demo it, borrow it from a friend. Go on Facebook and see if there's a riding club nearby and see if somebody in that group has that bike and, you know, go that way. See if you can just, just ride it, you know, just around the parking lot just to get a feel for it. Because what I like and what you like might be two totally different things or maybe we're exactly the same. You know, I get a lot of guys telling me that they're happy to see a bigger guy like myself get on some of these bikes because typically, you know, it's smaller guys riding them. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully, you know, you can get some information about this if you're looking to purchase any of these bikes or if you're looking to purchase any else. I've got a full playlist right here of all the bikes that I reviewed over the years. These are probably the, just the, the most recent of the 29ers that I really like. Do all that stuff for me, please. Hit that like button, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that bell notification as well. Make sure you click all videos so you get notified of anything else that I have coming out in the future. And last but not least, click on one of these boxes up in the corners. One will take you to a playlist, another to a favorite video, and you can click the logo over there, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo to subscribe. Thanks a lot.